we exalt you for who you are. We worship you because indeed you are a good, good father. Oh, he's got good to you this morning. Come on, just lift up your hands and just magnify God from the depth of your heart this morning. Come on, just go ahead and exalt him. Sing songs of thanksgiving to him this morning. Oh, Father, we exalt you. Oh, Jesus, we give you all the praise. Do I have grateful people in the house this morning? Do I have grateful people in the house this morning? Do I have grateful people in church this morning? Come on, just go ahead and worship your maker. Oh, Jesus, we exalt you. Oh, Jesus, we magnify you. Lord, you are the cup that never runs dry. And Jesus, we give you all the praise this morning. We exalt you because indeed you are a good, good father. Lord, we give you all the glory. Jesus, we exalt you. And we say, take all the glory. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. In Jesus' name, we worship. Come on, are you excited to be in church this morning? If you are excited to be in church, come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're welcome to church. And you may please have your seats. Once again, happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the house. Hallelujah. All right, this morning I'm just going to read to you quickly from our daily devotional. It's still our devotional on love. And our devotional this, this morning is titled, Adjust Your Wardrobe. Our text is taken from the book of Colossians chapter 3. I'm reading verse 14. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I have the bond of perfection. Say, I have the love of God shed abroad in my heart. Hallelujah. When was the last time you walked into your wardrobe and your clothes jumped on you? I don't think you have ever experienced that before. Have you? Instead, when you walk into your closet, closet, you expect to choose. That's a deliberate action. The appropriate clothes and go through the trouble of putting them on by yourself. In the same way, we need to put on the love of God on a daily basis. Hallelujah. Just like the clothes you are already, uh, that are already in the closet, the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. Love is not something you pray for. Is somebody hearing that? You already have the love of God in your heart. To put on the love of God means to allow the love of God in your heart to show in your heart what conduct. It means to give the love of God outward expression. Love from your heart is screaming out for expression. Hallelujah. If it looks like your wardrobe of love needs a boost, then it's probably because you have not been putting on the love of God. Don't leave your closet wearing your closet wearing the clothing of tri- strife, malice, and unforgiveness. You are, you are a changed person. Let the changes that have, that have occurred within you show forth in your apparent expression. It's time to change your fashion sense. Put on the love of God. Hallelujah. You know, uh, the same way you are deliberate about the clothes you put on, you are meant to be deliberate about your actions as well. Even when the circumstances naturally say you should respond out of strife or hunger, but the same way you are deliberate about what you wear to church this morning, you are supposed to be deliberate about your response where every situation is concerned. So, you have the love of God in your heart already. Just allow you to find full expression. Can you just repeat after me as we take our confession this morning? Say, I am born of God. Say, I have his nature of love. The love of God has been shed abroad in my heart. I release the force of God's love within me on a consistent basis. I do not walk in strife. I cannot hear you. I do not walk in strife. I do not walk in malice or unforgiveness. I freely, I walk freely in the love of God because it's my nature. I subject my flesh to walk in love 
I do not walk according to the dictates of the flesh, but I walk as led by the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit enables me to walk in love at all times. Say, God is with me, God is in me, and God is for me, so I cannot fail. I please God and I obey His commandments. I love God and I love my neighbors as myself. I therefore walk under open heavens. God opens the windows of heavens over my life because I cooperate with Him by walking in love. I enjoy the benefits of the new covenant established on a better promises. I walk in healing. I walk in health. I walk in prosperity, preservation, and wholeness. I'm satisfied with long life. Say that one more time. Say, I'm satisfied with long life and prosperity. I cannot fail in life because love never fails. Whatsoever I lay my hands upon prospers. I prosper in my health, in my family, say in my marriage, in my relationships, and in my career. I'm born to win. I'm designed for success. I stand out in my location. I'm distinguished because I walk in love. I represent God adequately in the crooked and, pre and perverse generation. I shine as light. I'm set upon a hill. I cannot be hidden. I'm an effective witness of the kingdom of God because I walk in love. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Children's Church, are you ready? All right. Good morning, everyone. This poem is for my dad and all the other daddies here. To the world, you are a dad. To our family, you are the world. Do you know why? You always listen to me. You taught me how to have fun. You were always there for me and guiding me. I always had your shoulders to lean on. You taught us to love unconditionally. Thank you for the final things in your li in, in life, your time, your care, and your love. Thank you, Dad, for everything, Dad. I love you, my Dad. <laughs>
so glad that you are that you own the minion. When you come to God, that's for that. Yeah, that's all looking at the girl. You don't mean the water was whether you are good or bad. I really love you. You are fine, you are fine. I will love daddy. Hallelujah. Should we, should we stay up here or we'll come down? Stay up here. Hallelujah. This is dedicated to all fathers. And uh, both current dads and aspiring dads.
morning, everybody. Still in the spirit of Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. We love you. So we want to play a quick game for our fathers. Ah, fathers now. It's a game. Oh, don't worry. Don't be scared. It's simple. It's very simple questions. It's just how well you, you know your children. Just how well you know them. I will quickly say one thing before I go into the the game. There was one um, video I watched that um, they asked the father when his child's birthday was and he was like I don't know. The child was surprised. I said, Daddy, my birthday was yesterday. Ha! He said, really? I didn't know. Just yesterday. He didn't even know that his child's birthday was yesterday. He didn't know his um, child's birthday date. Imagine. So I'll call on three handsome fathers to come forward please to answer our beautiful questions so in no particular order i'll call past um, sorry mr uh, pastor but wait sir, first i'll call pastor too but not yet sir mr Songwo to come forward please i'll need his wife present please <laughs> sorry just the father should come forward the wife should stand around please The next person is Mr. Elua. <laughs> Woo! Woo! And our very own daddy, our pastor, our very own father in the house. Pastor, 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 pastor Yinka. I'll give you this shape, three inch. Hey. <laughs> Sorry, all our mom is still sit down. We want to see you here because you give us the correct answers because we know you know it. Mm. Yes. Ah ah. <laughs> okay. So this is how the game will go. Once I ask my first question, Daddy, you write your answer. So after you have written your answer, we will now ask our mommies to give us the answer. So when our mommy says our answer, we will raise your plan card to the world. So if it is January 13, mommy says 52, you will write 13. <laughs> I'm not there. Uh, I'm not there. So let's go into the, right into our game. <laughs> Mr. Sawo, are you ready? We have just 10 questions. And you pick from 1 to 10. Just pick any question. Now you go do your, yourself by yourself. So you pick, yes, you, no, 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 not everybody. So Mr. Sam, so first. So you pick your question, yes. Question for, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, Mr. Sam, hmm. what day of the week was your child, your children, sorry, your two first children, because you born two children on the same day. Yes. What day of the week did they burn them? Did your wife enter labor? And she, uh -huh, the day, not the dates. So, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Mm. So, which one? No, don't tell me. I'll write it down. Because me, I didn't know. I'm not there. The, uh -huh. Um, <laughs> Mommy Sawo, Daddy Sawo has written a name. I be a no, 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 ah, not yet. So, Ma, where's the mic? Please, this is my mic. Yes. So, which day did you give birth to your twins? Saturday. Hey, Daddy, 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 raise up the day you wrote. Raise it up, I love this day you wrote. Even you wrote Thursday. Now, now Thursday even for your shite. So, mommy, be like, who is, who is right like this? We don't even know. So, mommy is definitely right because she was the one that pushed the baby out. Let's clap for daddy summer, please. So, um, our daddy's next. Sir, please pick your question. Question two. What's your, your last child's favorite food? That food that's, ah, if you put in front of Mure, and you will not be like, ah, I didn't want to. Please. Okay. 
All right. My mommy, <laughs> please, you know the rice or the beans. Tell us. Yellow fries. Hey, daddy got me. <laughs> Give our daddy a round of applause. <laughs> Number seven. Fanta or Coke? Which will your second child go for? Fanta, I be Coke. Which one? Will he jump out? Which one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You said you don't know. You must know. Okay. Please, mommy, what's happening now? Don't fall my hand now. No, the options are too limited, actually. That's oh, no, it, it's among those two. Among those, those, uh, those two. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's... I don't know, really. I, I, none of the above. Ah, it's not like any of them. Ah, but our daddy say both of them. Oh. So, if you are saying none of the above, our daddy is saying both of them. It's not the same thing. Oh. It may it's not like it. But that is say he liked the two of them. So, eh? He likes drinking. He likes drinking. Uh -huh. So let's give a round of applause for our daddy. So our second round of the question, back to Mr. Sawo, that born his twins on Thursday. Um, sorry, Sawo, I'm very sorry. Um, pick your question. No, um, you pick... Um, Four to seven, yes. Yeah, so four to seven is out. So we still have one. We still have three. Number one, okay. What's your first? What are your first children' birthday dates? Eh, uh -huh. eh. that Thursday that you write. Right Thursday birthday. Yes. What's your birthday dates? The dates, Gaga. <laughs> the dates. The dates. The months. The day, the year, that's dates. June 12th now. Uh -uh. You'd not remember again. June 12th, 2008. June 12th. Uh. The, the year, the year they born yes. yes, the year. Ah. <laughs> How old are they now? Mr. Savo, you have right birthday. So, May what? May 12. Ah, what year? 2017. 2017. Oh, you have this now? What? You don't like this year? He said he cannot remember, but he got the date. Let us give him a round of applause. Half mark, half mark for him. So, um, uh, that is the next round. Pick your question, sir. Two is gone. One, two is gone. There's still three. There's five. There's six. There's eight, nine, eight. What class is your first child? Ah, yes. Oh, it's simple. Oh yeah, our mommy will give us the answer. This, this one is simple. Even me, I know the answer. Oh yeah, mommy, give us the answer. No. Part one. Part one. Daddy got it. Please give our daddy a round of applause. Mr. Elua. So, your turn. Number ten. What is your first child's favorite subject? Have you come and sit down here? Because we like will give you questions too. So. Mommy said, where is the son himself? The son is here, Abby. Uh -huh. she, she like, okay, she's the daughter. Uh -huh. She likes book. Uh -huh. But there's one that is always sweet in her body. That, ah, ah. That one, that particular one, that she's always like, Daddy, I want to do my assignment. Daddy, give me a king, king, king. Daddy, give me a contest of Mommy, 
me what's the answer because even me have have lost please where is the child Wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, ah, the time of it, hey, I end that. you heard that, but say and that thing, please, act like you know yet. That's not what I to say, Matt. Ah, but that is a literature. Literary, literacy, so who's correct? Our child, obviously, is correct, he knows, she knows her subject, she knows what she likes most, daddy, please, I beg, let us know what our children like, I beg, thank you, please give our daddy a round of applause. At least he tried. He not say she likes literacy too. But she likes li- li- literacy too. I'm very sure of that. So the last round, we still have um, five. We have six. We have um, nine, right? Nine. So please, let's... Mr. Sonwo. Number... No, it's not Mr. Sonwo, number nine. Yes, number nine. What is your second child... Favorite snack? Uh, no, there's this snack. There will be a snack that that child over to revive. She will, eh? That favorite snack. Mommy, so whoa. Wait, oh, please. Don't you give us the answer? Oh, yeah. Answer, please, ma. Eh? Cheese balls. Oh, he got it! Everybody give him a round of applause! We are happy! <laughs> we are happy! <laughs> so, our daddy, please, your, your question. There's still five. We, number six. What is the name of your eldest child's closest friend? Please, so, where's the, our eldest child? He's not around. Oh. Okay. Ah. Oh. Daddy Shah. Ah. Oh. Oh. Our daddy got the answer again. Please let us give our daddy a standing over. Okay, the last but not the least, number five. What is the color of your first child's room? Yes, the room that is sleeping. But your daddy is to go inside the room. You will know the color of the room. Because daddy, be like, say, you know, it's so good, yeah. So, say you need the color. Okay. Cream. 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 Ah. He gets his shot. Oh, yeah, show us. Daddy, man, love it. He's so good, yeah. Let's give our daddy a round of applause. So this brings us to the end of our game. Let's clap for all the daddies in the, in the house. And um, this is to say that, um, daddies, please let us know our children better. Let's learn to um, ask questions when we have to. Or just be of um, observance. Let's see the things they do. It's, it will come up one day. They can just ask you on the road or something so you can answer the questions. Thank you, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Good morning, church. Happy Father's Day. Can all the men in the house please stand up? Let's see all the men. All the men. I not say I did not say father. All the men in the house, please stand up. Please stand up. Please, can we celebrate them? <laughs> celebrate them! It's Father's Day! And we're here to celebrate all the men who are doing the job of fathering. Please hear me? The men who have born children biologically. The men who are fathering children spiritually. The men who are, you know, who are an influence to young ones out there. You are doing the job of fathering. Hallelujah. The men who are providing. The ones who are taking up children by way of adoption. 
Even if you have not even better the child, there's a child you're taking care of. Probably the father of that child has passed. You are looking over the child. Celebrate yourself. We celebrate you this morning. The ones who are doing the job of mentoring. We see you. We see you. We acknowledge you all and we celebrate you. Hallelujah. Please be seated this morning. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Fatherhood is not just about betting children. Even though, yes, it is basically at the core. It's the basis. But we have seen that over time, there are young men or older men who are playing the roles of fathers that may not have even bettered any child. Praise the name of the Lord. We have seen men who have taken up the role of adoption. You know, they don't have children of their own biologically, but they have adopted one and say, okay, I'm going to raise you and nurture you to become something in life. We celebrate those men today. Hallelujah. And I know we have some here. We celebrate you. We see you. Probably you've taken up a sibling's child that the father has passed or the father has sconded or the father is nowhere to be found. And you're fathering the child. You're looking out for the child, training the child. We see you and we acknowledge you. Praise the name of the Lord. This morning we have a talk show. Yes, this is coming from KIC Broadcasting Network. <laughs> celebrate us, celebrate us. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we have a talk show for the fathers this morning, really. It is important we have this talk show because over time we have seen so many things and it has left us asking questions. Oftentimes you hear Mother's Day, Women's Day, that you know, in fact, twice in a year, even three times in a year, we celebrate mothers. Even four times. Pastor is telling us four times. You know, and you see that the rave on motherhood is so much and the fatherhood is just left silent. And we see that the mothers can't do so much without the fathers. Yes, we have our roles as mothers, but there is a greater need even now for the fathers to step up. Praise the name of the Lord. This talk show this morning, we're going to be challenging the fathers out there. We see all of you. We know you're doing a great job. A great job at providing. We hear, I'm going to work. I'm doing this. I'm doing... You're doing a great job. Hey, do you know that the role of provision is at the bottom? I'm not even going to put it first. Because that's... With the advent of white-collar jobs, we have seen fathers left home. Fathers have gone out in search of golden fleas, so to speak. Before then, what happened? We saw fathers who stayed home, walked on the farm. You know, they used their hand. They did, you know, different enterprise by their hands. But with the colonization of the white men, they brought the white collar jobs. And fathers, we see, you know, we now saw fathers leaving home in search of greener pasture. And that has made them disconnect so much. So this morning, I'm not going to be doing a lot of talking. I have five-man panelists that are going to be doing this with us this morning. I know for the sake of time that this is important. And so help me welcome, with Jesus' joy in my heart, the first person we're going to be having on our panel this morning, Mr. I.P. Emeke Kwe. Please help me welcome him this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the second one on our list this morning, we have, yes, I held him. I said, this one, you will not escape me. You've been escaping others, but this one, I hold you by the waist. Praise the name of the Lord. Please help me make very welcome this morning, um, Mr. Amusong Olaolu. Welcome him for me. Yeah. Yeah. Next on the list, I have... Yes, a brother to a very dear brother. Help me make welcome Mr. Nelson Akabwe. And I have on the list as well a young man who is on the way to that journey. And we're going to be looking at, you know, this from his own perspective, from his own eyes. How he says it, fatherhood. Help me make welcome this morning Mr. Patrick Daniel. Yes. And the last but not the least, I have a beautiful lady that I'm bringing up. And we are saying, lady, Father's Day. Why the woman? We're going to be seeing it from the eyes of the woman as well. Uh, you know, from the eyes of the female child, so to speak. 
the essence of fatherhood. Please help me make welcome this morning, Mrs. Temi Tokbe Okimbe. And of course, I am your host, Abigail Ihimekbe. Thank you. How do we sit? I sit here. Oh, okay. All right. Sit here. Please make my guests very welcome again. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're all welcome, and I'm happy. The lights. Oh. <laughs> Probably would we'll cover it a bit. Okay. Oh. <laughs> all right. Sorry. Oh, you just helped me turn the direction. Okay. Oh, you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, and thank you for the honor for coming on this show so we can look at, you know, a topic that is really, um, you know, at the core of our hearts, you know, so we look at it together. And the topic is, where are the fathers? Where are the fathers? It has become important we ask these questions because we have seen a rising decline in so many, you know, what we tend to call family values. We see it out there in our society. We see it out there somewhere. And somebody say, okay, I, I'm not sure in the church. We have even seen it in the church. One that bothers me is we have seen young ones go on a search for a new identity. They are wondering, who are we really? And we are asking questions. Where are the fathers? You know, that is at the bottom of it all in my heart because I see these young ones, suddenly a young man is saying he's no longer a man, he's a woman. And we see all of them around us and we're wondering, who raised these children? What went wrong? And can I shock you, audience, please? Even in church, <laughs> we have seen the children, as in, brothers who were committed who are committed to the service of God suddenly coming out to say I am not a man anymore I am not brother John I am now you know brother Joanna maybe or sister and we are asking who better these children who raised them where did they go wrong where did things go wrong and so we are asking this morning where are the fathers but quickly can we quickly meet our guest by way of quick 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 Introduction. I'll start with you, Mr. IP. Okay. Okay. Quickly, let's get to know you. Okay. All right, praise God. Um, my name is Patrick. I'm a copywriter and married for seven years, and I have two boys. Thank you. Woo! Praise God. My name is Daniel Patrick Okelgene. Thank you. Praise God. I'm Nelson, screenwriter, copywriter, um, among other things. My name is Timtokwe Okimbe. I, um, I work, I'm married for five years, and I have two children. Ola Olua Musha, a teacher, married for five years. No, four, going to five. Okay, she says it's still five. Um, I study physics. Thank you. Okay, but I'll allow you to hold the mic. What, can you quickly tell us, what is the relationship with your father like? Hmm. While growing up, now that you have become a man, what was he like? Well, growing up, I won't say we, we were so close. I would say that he balanced everything. You cannot say that this is the person that is more closer to him than this other person. Maybe he has somebody that is closer to him than myself. I wouldn't know. But he didn't leave that gap of, ah, this one is the closest to me. This is the favorite child. He didn't leave that gap. So what I would say is that we are all close to him. When he's happy, we know. When he's not happy, we know. When I'm not happy, he knows. So I think that is so the level of... 
I, it, it, not just a bit. There was a, every level of relationship between us. Okay. Of your relationship, what what was it like? I understand that here yeah, somewhere along the line, it led quite. And probably tell us a bit of that. Okay, uh, for me it was amazing. I had this one of the best fathers anybody can think of. I mean, my birthday was just a day before his home, and um, though he passed 16 years ago, but there is no day, absolutely no day that goes by that I can't. I don't remember him, that I don't miss him because I had the best relationship you can think of with my father. Wow. And probably at the time you were much younger. Uh, yes, I was, in, left. I was in year And one. how was it like for you growing up without your father? It was actually very painful because nothing prepares you from going from having everything to having almost nothing. You know, I grew up in an exclusive nuclear family. It was just me, my dad, my mom, and my siblings. And then all of a sudden, my mom died, and then my dad died, and I was confused. <laughs> And this thing, you know, their death happened within the space of five months in a year. So I went from having everything to practically having nothing. I was displaced from my house. I, because we didn't have any extended family, so to say. So I was just sort of confused and lost. And then for that, I, I was fighting God. I fought God for almost seven months because it didn't make sense for my parents to die. And I was That's left with nothing. Age. Because this man drove me to school. On Saturday, I went to uni on Saturday, and then they called me on Thursday that my mom had died. And then five months later, the same call in school, they're like, oh, we didn't see daddy. And, you know, it was just, I was just like, this whole thing doesn't make sense. So it and was, while it must have been very challenging. It's very painful. Young girl yeah, exactly. When we have four siblings to cater to. Wow. Don't feel sorry for me. <laughs> Patrick, how was growing up for you and what was the relationship with your father? Okay, praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, thanks for being here. It's a privilege, it's a privilege and the honor to be here. So, um, you know, there's, there's something they normally say. Um, if you've not been shown love before, you will not be able to express love. So, um, my dad grew up in a family whereby there is no love. So, they never showed him any love, and there, there was no affection, there was no concern, and everything was just, it, because his dad was actually in the military, so, you know, growing up in the military home like, like that. So, him not um, encountering love extended to me as a child. So, um, most times, my, my, my siblings say, I'm, I'm too serious, I'm too serious, I'm too serious, every time. I hardly joke, I don't... I, 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 it's, it's, it's like if you really joke with me, I don't really, really laugh like that. It, it takes it takes a really really funny joke to make me laugh, like a really funny joke. So I'm that serious because of my upbringing. My dad was always serious with me, like it was as if it was it was on top of my matter. So um, so I never really had um, this um, love affection. So I don't even know what love affection really is at that. But now I know now, so I can show you love. <laughs> So, um, growing up with him was, was very, very f funny. And I, I could not relate with my dad because of he was far. The, the, the only time I want to... Absent. Like, like, it's not like he was absent. Physically. But f emotion, emotionally, I could not relate with him. Connect. Physically, he was always there. The only time I could talk to my dad was when... Um, Maybe um, I, I need, didn't money. It was always, it was always there financially. Like, you need money for anything. I'm, I'll sort you out. I'll sort you out. I'll give it to you. But emotional things, it was not there at all. So, um, but there were some things he did for me at that particular time. That, um, in, you know, when somebody is present with you most times, you may not really value the presence of that person. In as much as it was very tough with me that time. A lot of things that he did that, he, that I learned just by watching him do actually really helped me on the long run. Because I, and I started seeing why he was doing this thing like this. I started seeing why he was doing this particular thing like this. And when, it was when he actually left, the, like, it was like six months to when he was leaving this yeah. world, that was when I started getting close to him. Wow, so I, I didn't really have much of his affection and stuff like that. So, so growing up, my dad was not really, really 
that have been that interesting, but it was later on I started understanding a lot of things. You know, most times your dad might, might be very, very strict with you about a lot of things, but later on you understand, wow, this is the reason why. If you had not done this particular thing, I wouldn't have been like this. Thank so, you very much. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. There was something he said. There wasn't that environment. As in that environment, it was just about catering. Take the money and off you go. Praise the name of the Lord. There was a disconnect emotionally. And that's what really is at the height of it for fathering. For fatherhood, you know, it's not just about providing. Providing is at the basis. Because the Bible says a man who cannot provide for his household is what? Is worse than an infidel. So that's the basic responsibility. We wouldn't even want to hold it a priority. Even though, yes, it is a priority because some fathers don't even cater. But it is not at the height of it. The environment for nurturing was not there. So he felt a disconnect. And you see, so many times, over time, I've come to realize that our parents, the way we were raised is to the extent they knew. <laughs> yes. Our parents, to the extent they knew. So I have stopped judging our parents. And I don't know if you're out there, you're still judging your parents. It's to the extent they know. That's why we have a lot of information. Who taught our parents? Who taught them? Who raised them as well? It's the extent. So you see that the right environment is important. It is not just money, money, money all the time. Someday that child is going to say, Daddy, I don't need any gift from you. I need you. You. Spend time with us. Spend time with us. Ah, Daddy, do you have to go to work again? Praise the name of the Lord. We'll hold that thought there. Miss Emeka Kwe, please tell us. I know your story is one that touches my heart so much and I know there are young people out there who can relate to your story. How was growing up for you? Okay, um, so first, I guess a lot of people already know, my own dad wasn't there. Um, so I grew up with my aunties, and um, so I didn't have that, like she said, the nuclear family of having a father and a mother. And that was what I grew into. So it's not like my dad was there, then he left. So I never knew him until three, four years ago when we met. Then, so for my aunties, like she said, they did what they could do best. So what was major for them was the catering part, which was, of course, ensuring he went to school. Oh, this is my sister, because they are from my mom's side. This is, okay, my sister's son, let's take care of him and all that. But that nurturing, that leadership that a father gives wasn't there at all and of course I didn't even really understand the gap until when I got married so a lot of things began to play out but of course grace <laughs> and all has helped us okay so basically there wasn't fine your daddy wasn't yeah. on the scene at the time while growing up and everything but was there someone who stepped into the role of fatherhood for you or fathering you Nobody. Yeah, of course, one of my aunties had, okay, my uncle-in-law, but he wasn't, that role wasn't played as it were. It was more of, there was a bit of financial support, but there was no father figure. So how did you learn? Uh, okay, so, <laughs> all right, so how did I learn? That's now, right? Yeah, how did you learn? How did you get to that point that, okay, okay. I'll be different, and my story has to be different? Okay, so, um, all right. So for me, I knew where I was coming from. So before I got married, I remember, okay, I got married February 3rd. And I remember that was on a Saturday. I remember on this Monday when I was coming back to Lagos. So on that journey, I just said to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I've begun this journey. I don't know anything about it. I have the statistics of how coming from that background, the most likely way your marriage will fall out. And I said, I'm here. What do I do? I need you to help me. And the Holy Spirit told me, I will help you. And that's the word that I've run with. So through the journey, he's helped me. One of the ways he helped me was, past times and I becoming neighbors. It's covered off a lot of things, because I watched him. We spoke. We spoke a lot of times. He taught me things, both by conversation and by watching. And of course, I built on the word of God. I, 
I, I allowed the word of God to lead. So even things I didn't know, just by following the word and by following the Holy Spirit. So then, of course, a lot of learning, a lot of watching. Yeah. So those things came in. Then, of course, my wife. My wife has been very supportive. Hallelujah. She, she taught me a lot. I know that. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. If there's anything I'm going to say from that to us is, I don't know who that young man is out there, or you're a mother and the father of the child is not on the scene. I encourage you, look within your space. Look within your circle. Probably your pastor. Say, Pastor, sir. I need you to father this child for me. Because so many times we think that I can do it. I can do it. But do you, there is a place of a father. That is my emphasis today. There is a place of a father. I am not going to downplay it. No matter how you tell me you are a superwoman at the job that you are doing. There is a role you can take away. And which is the role of the father. You can feel because when those children start discovering themselves... Particularly for the young men. When they start coming up and asking you questions you can't answer. Only a man can relate and can answer that. Brother Nelson, I know you had a superb relationship with your father. How has that molded the man that you are today? I know you had an awesome relationship. Um, yes, thank you. The relationship with my dad has um, helped me see that God understand the love of God. That's one. For instance, I always say in prayer, I always say to God that God, you gave me, you're not intimidated by me knowing that you love me. That's why you gave me such a father. And there's no man that can be better than God. So if my father could love me this much, do all this for me, then I know you can do that. You love me right now and you're doing a lot better. So that, that's one way my father's relationship with me has helped me to see the love of God, understand the love of God. And it also helped me to have a vision for how I'd raise my own children and my family. Yeah, that's it. And so you encourage, are you encouraging? So what are you saying to the men out there concerning and based off of your experience with your dad? What are you saying to them? What are you saying? Please, you can learn from this experience too. All I have right. this. I have all, all right. This, I have all so my dad was my best friend. My dad was my best friend. My dad was my guy. So um, if I, if I'm, if I, if I'm, if I become it, if I'm a dad like my dad was, I would be successful. I'll be a successful dad, and that's that's from that year. So I don't I, I don't see much that I will change in my own fathering um, style. So you just work on that. Yes. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. In fact, we had so much to say, but I'm saying time, 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 time. They're giving me prompts and all of that. Final word, brother Alolo. Final word. The fathers who are absent. How can we encourage them out there to become present? My okay. final word would be that image is the most important thing. The father image. As a teacher, I've seen a lot in school. We know the child that is doing well. When a child is doing well, rather, we know that the parent is they present home. in the house. Some parent doesn't even know the challenge their child has at school. They don't know the letter that is the most difficult letter for that child to write. And yet, they feel that they just come home and bully the child. You are not doing well, you are not doing that. But they've not, they've not done their own part to see the problem that child has. That is just on the level of writing. Academic. My father taught me how to read and how to do simple arithmetic. And it has helped me a long way. My advice for father out there is to always be present know their fears, know their problems, laugh with them, play with them, bond. I think when you teach your child how to write or read, you are bonding. You are bonding. And as far as I know, that bond will last long. Thank you very much. Mr. Kimbe, final word. For me, it will be... Yeah, yeah, okay. So it will be to look for a father figure. If you can find one. I was lucky enough to have one in the place of the pastor in church because a friend dragged me to Kingswood and then Pastor Dio was amazing to me. In also, even before they got married, after they got married, he took me in, I lived with them, so I was able to see and learn firsthand from him. So for some people, if you don't have a present father, there are 
willing people that are willing to help you maximize the opportunity utilize it it will go a long way thank you very much all right your final words which quickly 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 all right i i'll say that i don't see any specific roles gender specific roles for a father a father should do everything that a mother does. A mother should do, almost can do everything that a father does, but they all do it with different flavors. So a father should not sit be somewhere and say, that's the mother's job. You do that. They can get involved too. Thank you very much. Praise God. The um, late Bishop Ash Benzid also said something when he was preaching one time. He, said, he was asking for some of his elders, and he said, they were not around. And he said, oh Lord, whatsoever thing that is taking your children away from you, take that, those, that job away, take that business away. And he said it on the altar that particular day. And most of them, they lost their jobs, they lost their businesses. And they, they came not, back they home. Came, they came back to church. They were now very, very, very committed. So, I want to say this to, to fathers. It, I, it was, okay, thank you. It was later on I started getting close to my father when we lost virtually everything. Don't allow the loss of everything be that thing that would now start. Ah, what? My dad was not noticing me. Wow, I have a son. Patrick. He was not noticing me. The, there was a time la like that. He was with his friend and they, they, were, they, they were gisting. And the, the friend said that this one, you don't humanize with all the women for Abraka. My dad said that, no, this one is a pastor. Like he could, he could confidently now say that this is my son. He can never be like that. Before it was not like that. But something had to make this kind of thing happen. So don't allow. Um, loss of things, no, but, but don't allow it. Thank praise you God. Thank very you. much. Thank you. All right, praise God. So, um, what I'll say is um, let God's word be your standard. And why I say that is so, imagine a scenario where your dad wasn't there for you. Most likely, you might play out, you know, that on your children. But when the word of God is your standard, you know, it puts a check. And even those of us who had our fathers there, they were not necessarily perfect. So the word of God corrects and levels everything. So let the word of God be your standard. Of course, you still do all you have to do, the loving and all that. But let the word be your standard. And of course, have a transgenerational vision for your kids. Because that's who God is, transgenerational. So it's going to pass things from you to them. So just have that view in mind. All right, praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. I know time has not been on our side, but we just encourage the fathers out there. You're doing a great job. Keep at it. Don't let the work take you, know, take you away from the children, from the home. Be there for them. And I'm going to leave us with these words from God, because God is the greatest person we can learn the job of fathering from. He did a good job at fathering everyone everyone starting with adam and eve he was always coming down to have what fellowship relationship he was always relating with them praise the name of the lord genesis 18 17 to 19 says message translation then god said shall i keep from abraham what i'm about to do abraham is going to become a large and strong nation all the nations of the world are going to find themselves blessed through him yes I have settled for, it, for him as the one to train his children. Please listen. God didn't say Sarah. He had to say Abraham, the father. I have settled for him to train his children and future family to observe God's way of life. Live kindly and generously and fairly so that God can complete in Abraham what he promised him. Praise the name of the Lord. So you see, your blessing is not complete until you fulfill that part of scripture, of nurturing, of making sure you are the one to train your children, fathers. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you all.
Show me that I'll be better. Your hand is my comfort, beating me up when I fall short. Your voice makes me strong, teaching me what's right and wrong. Your smile says it all. Father, I love you more than all. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. To the children's church, we just need to move on with the service. Thank you very much. And um, can we just settle in a bit? We still need the children around. Hallelujah. So happy Father's Day. This is just a message in my heart that God gave me this morning that I just want to share with the fathers in the house. Happy Father's Day. Fathers are super special. Have you noticed? God is our Heavenly Father and not our Heavenly Mother. Great fathers are great at nurturing and releasing. They are secure and at rest, allowing the woman to thrive and to flourish, allowing their children to be all that they can be. Great fathers are great teachers, instructors, full of wisdom and insight, which is skillfully shared in few words. Great fathers are great examples, like Apostle Paul. Follow me as I follow Christ. They model first through submission to God. They model godly character. They do not delegate this to the woman. They are God-fearing, god chasers. The children continue to remember and say when they are older, Father will never approve of this. Great fathers are providers. Even when they do not have enough, they know how to talk to God on behalf of family, and calling the provisions. Good fathers are pained when they cannot provide. Some of the defensive stance is because they truly bleed on the inside when they cannot supply. Great fathers learn to lean on God, knowing they were not designed to meet family needs on their own, but providers under God. Great fathers submit to God and men so that they can be taught how to profit and experience peace like a river. Great fathers build an intimate relationship with their heavenly father, like it's typical of Jesus. Their words are few, but effectual, powerful, full of authority and effective. Jesus at the tomb of Lazarus simply said, Lazarus, come forth. The centurion said, speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. And God is miracle. Jesus took the little boy's lunch and said, Father, 
I thank you because you hear me always and the bread and the fish multiplied. With great fathers, you don't need to tell all the stories. They understand you don't need to say much before you can be heard. I think they will help women save time for productive purposes. C. He was wired to till the ground. I guess there are tasks to be done. He got the job first before he got Eve. Selah. No wonder he can be so goal and task oriented. But he needs to continue to remember. There is an Eve to tend. And if Eve is well tended, he will be helped in the garden. Great fathers do not repeat the errors of the past. The first error man made was failure to take responsibility. Adam failed to take responsibility for the fruit he had willfully. Fully aware of the consequences, knowing he will lose it all. Today, men still fall short eating fruits that will cost them their fortune, their reputation, their life, and even eternity. Some others fail to eat the fruit that will bring them life abundance and prosperity. As we celebrate Father's Day, I charge every father, every husband, every man to take responsibility for their actions, their decisions, to never have an entitlement mentality, to take charge of their emotions in God, apply yourself to purpose, find a good work and do it as unto the Lord. Remember there was first an Adam and then Eve. There was a garden and then Eve. Your life, your purpose is, is a, is, comes before the attraction and the seductions. Remember not all that glitters is gold. Avoid the reduction and the destruction. Remember you will give account. Rise up and be all that you were born to be. It's good and comely to be a God worshipper, a God chaser. It's cool not to do drugs, women, or that which intoxicates. It's cool to be a man of the word and the spirit. It's cool to rep God in career and business. It's cool to take that mountain. Like Moses, you can lead a nation into their land of promise. Like Joshua, you can divide an inheritance. Like David, you can take down giants. Like Daniel, you can be delivered from the den of lions on hot. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you can rise unafraid in a fiery furnace and experience the deliverance by the fourth man. Like Caleb at 80, you can take that mountain. Who says you are too old to start? Men, you've got it in you. Go and take your word for Jesus. Arise and lead the eaves. They have been long waiting. The earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. Happy Father's Day. To all the best fathers in the world, can you rise on your feet one more time? To all the best fathers in the world, can we put our hands together and just appreciate all the men in the house and just give a shout. Happy Father's Day. Can we have the children come forward very quickly? Can we have the children just run forward, run forward? Let the children run forward. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the house. Let all the children run forward quickly. Happy Father's Day. Come forward very quickly. Come forward very quickly. Can we put our hands together for the children as they come forward celebrating their fathers? Happy Father's Day. Find your dad. Celebrate your dad. Find your dad. Celebrate your dad. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm allowing the kids to be able to give to their fathers. in the name of Jesus, we give you the praise and all the glory. We ask the Lord you will speak a word in 
due season to each and every one of us that lord god almighty will be changed and transformed by your word and by your spirit we ask that you do a quick walk in this place today in jesus mighty name and the people of god said amen, amen. hallelujah glory to god okay so um projector team you'll be helping me we're just going to read scriptures obviously i will not be able to do any exegesis on the scripture but i do believe the word of god will speak to us directly first corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 to 8a first corinthians 13 obviously you know it's the amplified version we're using so we'll be reading all the scriptures in amplified as quickly as possible uh, pray for your pastor that he will not be tempted to do any extra explanation. Amen. I'm sure some people are praying heavily on that. Hmm? Amen. So happy Father's Day, everybody. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it is well. Okay. So, First Corinthians 13 from verse 4. It says, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy. I'm looking for the, okay, four. Okay, love endures long and is patient. So, before we start reading, the main essence of why we're reading this is to be able to restructure, retrain our minds. I like one of the things that uh, one of the panelists said. He said, the word of God, it should be your habitat. It should be the one that is helping you have a balance. As much as possible, everyone here under the sound of my voice, Love is very important in the scheme of things, and we need to get down to the basics. So we're going to be reading the Bible to find out what the Bible has to say about love. Not what you think, but what the Bible says. And we will also follow the Bible. So before I start, I want to ask, how many people are Christians here? Please wave, wave. If you're a Christian, okay. If you're a believer, wave. Okay, good. Now, what... Christian means and believer means is the same thing. You are choosing Christ. And what that simply means is Christian means like Christ. You are like Christ. So that means anything you see Christ doing, you want to do. And you're also wired to do. So we're looking at scriptures to tell you what you are supposed to be doing to represent Christ properly in this world. So let's read. So look at yourself in this particular um, scripture. Don't look at somebody else but yourself. So let's start. Love endures long and is patient and kind. Don't worry, the exegesis for this particular message will come next week. It cannot fail. We must do it. So love endures long and is patient and kind. Love is love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy. It's not boastful or vainglorious, does not display itself haughtily. Please read the next verse. Verse 5. Conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude or mannerly and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. For it is not self-seeking, it is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered drunk. i read the next verse. Verse 6. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevails. Next verse, please. Let's read. Seven. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. Is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are faithless under all circumstances, and it endures everything. Without weakening. I'll read the last verse. Love never fails. Never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. And just so as to understand how powerful love is. He says, as for prophecies, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, it will be fulfilled and pass away. As for tongues, they will be destroyed and ceased. As for knowledge, it will pass away. It will lose its value and be superseded by truth. Verse 9, please. Very quickly. For our knowledge is fragmented, incomplete, and imperfect, and our prophecy, our teaching, is fragmented, incomplete, and perfect. So no matter all you know, no matter all the things that have been said, love is really the one that lasts and stands forever. It never fails. It never fades out. It's always going to be relevant and constant all through life. 
Love is that principle that is going to guide you and guard you in your work in the office, in your work in, um, in your business, in your home. It's going to be the one guiding you. It's going to be the one guiding you with your relationship with God. It's going to be the one guiding you all through. So one of the things you can do for yourself is to go get this amplified version, the 4 to 8a and print it out and put it somewhere in your room or somewhere around and keep looking at it that this is who I am. This is the capacity inside me. I've been wired to do this. So it says love endures long and is patient and guide. I'm going to do that. Why? That's what's already inside you. So let's go to the next verse. God help me. Matthew chapter 18. This is a long read. Matthew chapter 18. And I'm reading it in context so that we can understand where some scriptures came out from. Because we quote some scriptures without realizing where they are coming from. Matthew chapter 18, Matthew 18, verse 21 to 35. Matthew 18, okay. Then Peter came up to him and said, Lord, how many times may my brother sin against me and I forgive him and let it go? As many as up to seven times. This brother here, that we, we, the brother here can be brother, can be um, neighbor, can be friend, can be colleague, can be your boss. So that brother, you know, do you know the brother? Do you know the brother? Okay, good. So then Peter came up to him and said, Lord, how many times may I May my brother sin against me and I forgive him and let it go. As many as up to seven times. This is Peter. Go on. Jesus answered him. I tell you, not up to seven times, but 70 times seven. That's 490 in case you don't know. Yeah, move on. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like, so look at where we missed it. We thought that that thing just ended there. No, that statement went on. That particular message Jesus was trying to drive at went on. And he kept on going. So we are seeing the connection now. So after he said that, he now said, Therefore, the kingdom of heaven, what you should pattern yourself with, is like a human king who wished to settle accounts with his attendants. Go on. When he began the accounting, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents, probably about $10 million. Wow. That's a serious matter. Oh, yeah, go on. I didn't know that's the amount. And because he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and his children and everything that he possessed and payments to be made. Just in case you are not getting what I'm just saying, it's in context, which means the love that we just finished talking about, somebody is going to be checking, somebody is going to be accounting, somebody is looking at the books and wondering whether you are passing your books, are your books balancing? Somebody is looking up. Okay, so let's go on. And because he could not pay his master, ordered him to be sold with his wife and his children and everything that he possessed and payments to be made. Next verse, 26. So the attendant fell on his knees, begging him, have patience with me. I will pay you everything. Good. So that means the attendant was ready to love. And his, and his master's heart was moved with compassion. And he released him and forgave him, canceling the debt. Not even saying payback. Canceling the debt. Go on. But that same attendant, as he went out, found one of his fellow attendants who owed him a hundred denarii, about $20, $10,000, $20. And he caught him by the throat and said, pay what you owe. Next verse. So his fellow attendant fell down and begged him earnestly, give me time and I will pay you all. Same thing that he mentioned before. Go on. Verse 30. But he was unwilling, and he went out and had him put in prison till he should pay the debt. Meaning, somebody forgave you so much, and that somebody is God, then you have to forgive just a little, and you are holding on to it. So yeah, let's go on. But he was unwilling. Okay, when his fellow attendants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and told everything that had taken place to their master. So don't worry, angels are looking. Please, help yourself. Okay, next thing. Okay. Then his master called him and said to him, You contemptible and wicked attendant, I forgave and counseled all that great debt of yours because you begged me to. You know, we went to the cross, you know, to the altar, and we begged God. 
Am I right? Okay, go on. Next. I've read down. Okay. And should you not have had pity and mercy on your fellow attendants, as I had pity and mercy on you. Next verse. And in wrath, his master turned him over to the torturers, the jailers, till he should pay all that he owed. Next verse. 35. So also my heavenly father will deal with every one of you if you do not freely forgive your brother from your heart his offenses. Okay. Luke chapter 10. Luke 10. It's also a little read. Luke 10. Verse 25. Luke ten twenty five. Okay. And then a certain lawyer arose to try, test, tempt him, saying, Teacher, what am I to do to inherit everlasting life? You know, that's the question now. That is to partake of eternal salvation in the Messiah's kingdom. Next verse. What did Jesus say? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? Oh, yeah. Next verse. And he replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Very fantastic statements. Next. Did he do it is the question. And Jesus said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live, enjoy, active, blessed, endless life in the kingdom of God. So we see sometimes when we don't walk in love, the reason why we are not getting some of the manifestations that we are looking for. Let's go on. Next. And Jesus said to him, you have... Oh, no, we've read that. 29. And he, determined to acquit himself of reproach, you understand, uh, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? I could have titled this message, who is my neighbor? But since I'm not going to exist, Jesus will help herself. You just read along with me. Who is my neighbor? Jesus taking him up. Eh? You know, when you ask, who is my neighbor? Who am I to love? Like Jesus said I should love. Who am I to love? So Jesus taking him up replied, a certain man was going from Jerusalem down to Jericho. So that's where the Samaritan story came in. And he fell upon, among robbers who stripped him of his clothes and belongings and beat him and went their way unconcernedly, leaving him half dead. Okay? As it happened. Next verse. We are reading that seven, so don't worry. Now, by co- coincidence, a certain priest, holy man of God, Bible carrying, devil thumping Christian, was going down along that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. This is not the person that God told me to walk in love with. It is the nice person on the other side that he told me to. Okay, next verse. It's not my boss so that God told me to love him. Cannot be him. That colleague that has been annoying me. It cannot be the person. A Levite like and it's definitely not the spouse now. No. Okay. A Levite likewise came down to the place and saw him. This someone that has been in church for a while. So just in case you are wondering, a Levite knows the law knows what is required. Somebody that has been in church for a while, you know, a established Christian. Let's go on. Came down to the place and saw him and passed by on the other side of the road. I don't need to pass a test that I can avoid. Am I right? No. No. You are not right. Go on. Next verse. 33. Boy, a certain Samaritan, you know, Newly born again. As he traveled along, in fact, it's not even born again, he's just coming. Traveled along, came down to where he was, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity and sympathy for him. Next verse. And went to him and dressed his wounds, pouring on them oil and wine. Then he set him on his own beast, on his own beast, on his own beast, meaning he will have to walk, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. Next verse. And the next day he took out two denarii, two days' wages, and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I myself 
That's the real place. That's why I could have told you the story, but I wanted us to read it. I myself will repay you when I return, meaning I will take responsibility. I will take responsibility for this situation. Which of these three do you think proved himself a neighbor to him who fell among the robbers? His question now. Okay. Part seven. He answered, the one who showed pity and mercy to him. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Matthew chapter five, verse 38. In his Bible we are reading. Bible. Verse 38 to 48. Matthew five thirty-eight to 48. Don't worry. I'm going to walk within not the time that I'm normally supposed to use because obviously we'll be here for a long time. The time I've given myself. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Abi? Um, sorry, I, I remember something. Pepper them, Abi. Okay, that's good. Oh yeah, 39. You see how easily the world just creeps in and tries to teach you what the Bible is not teaching you. Make we pepper them, pepper them, pepper them. Okay. The people that pepper them, where are they now? Okay. But I say to you, do not resist the evil man who injures you. Eh? Ah, this one. Even when I read it to me, I say, hey. So let's read together. Let's read. Sorry, forgive me. Let's read together. Yeah, let's read. Don't worry, don't worry. It's not my own idea. Okay. Let's see, okay. Oh yeah, let's read. But oh yeah now. Say to you, do not resist the evil man. Evil man who injures you. But if anyone strikes you on the right jaw, turn to him the other one. Ha, 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 hold on. Is it Bible? It's paining me that this does not show that it's written in red. Jesus spoke this. So it's not a conversation. It's an instruction. So let's go on. Verse 40. So I got a swab and bashed your car and then... And if anyone wants to sue you and take your undershirt... Not the shirt, too. Let him have your coat. I take off the jacket, everything. That's why you drive dispensively. Eh, carry your while ago. For those that have ever been in my car, you will see me sometimes say, carry your while ago. Just carry, carry, carry. Because I have learned by experience, you, you want to show that you two you are, they have no problem bashing your car. I'm fighting you on the road. Can you fight? That's the question. So, so when you know you cannot fight, so why bother to even try? So that's what you, So give him his coat. Next verse. Uh, we're into 48. Don't worry. 48. So you're going. 41. Oh, yeah. Let's read. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. So somebody says, I beg now, I beg now. Bible, God, Jesus is instructing that you go not one, but two. Oh, yeah. Let's go on. 42. Oh, yeah, we are reading. It's Bible now. Stop now. Okay, you want me to read Philippians 4.19? The Lord shall survive. Let's read this one. Oh, yeah. Give to him who keeps on begging from you. And do not... Ah, this one, this one, I was wondering. But do not turn away from him who will borrow at interest from you. It's Bible. Yeah, next. 43. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Abina. Abi? Boko Haram. Okay. Even me, I still prayed one prayer yesterday. Uh, when I now, you now so, told me to read this scripture. I was, uh, you should have told me this one before I prayed that prayer. 
No, but the prayer is still good in one sense. Everybody that is disturbing Nigeria, let them just, you know. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who... Okay, verse 45. 45 is Bible. I know you don't read those ones, but let's read it again. 45. No, the, the, the people that don't read it are not in this church. Yes. To show that... Oh, oh, yeah, now, let's read. Let's read. To show that you are the children of your father who is in heaven. For he makes so stop. Please... Project your team. Go back to 44. So that we now read 44 to 45. Uh, so that they will see the collection. But, oh yeah, let's read. So you just move straight. But, and pray for those who persecute you for revive. To show that you have a uh, head. For he makes his son rise on the wicked and on the good. And makes the rain fall upon the upright and the wrongdoers alike. 46. For if you love those who love you, what reward can you have? Do not even the tax collectors do that. The publicans. The ones that don't even know God. Next verse. And if you greet only your brethren. Stop. This thing just came into my mind. You know all these uh, children from the other side. You know, sometimes they decide to give out gifts. Online. Have, have you not noticed? Eh? Giveaways and all those ones. Sometimes uh, uh, they just, you see them say, I, I gave this vehicle to somebody. I gave this thing. So w- the one you are doing and the one they are doing, what's different? If you only love the people that are in your fan, fan club. And if you greet only your bread, eh? let's read. He didn't do that. 48. You therefore must be perfect, growing into complete maturity of godliness in mind and character, having reached the proper height of virtue and integrity, as your heavenly Father is perfect. So notice he did not say you didn't have it. He said in mind that you become conscious that this is who you are. That it begins to change the way you think, the way you act, the way you operate. The motives on the inside changes because of this. Because of that. Ah, another long read. First Corinthians chapter 3. See why I needed my 15 minutes, but I'm not using 50. Don't worry. I've just used 12. Good. Yeah, let's go on. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 to 15. However, brethren, let's read together, please, so that we can quickly do this. However, brethren, I could not talk to you as spiritual men, but as to non-spiritual men of the flesh, in whom the carnal nature predominates, as to mere infants in the new life in Christ, unable to talk yet. Next verse. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not yet strong enough to be ready for it. But even yet, you are not strong enough to be ready for it. Next verse. We're reading to 15. Go on. For you are still unspiritual, having the nature of the flesh under the control of the ordinary impulses. That's where we shouldn't be. For as long as there are envying and jealousy and wrangling and factions among you, are you not unspiritual and of the flesh, behaving yourselves after a human standard like mere unchanged men? That's not who we are. Next verse. For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, Are you not proving yourselves ordinary, unchanged men? Next verse. What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Ministering servants, not heads of parties, through whom you believed, even as the Lord appointed to each his task. Stop. Before we go on and start thinking Apollos, Paul, I'll bring it nearer home. You have cliques. This is my friend. This can't be my friend. That doesn't work. 
We are all fellow children of God. Every one of us. The same blood was what was shed for you and for me. Same blood. Same. No different Savior. So, what then is Apollos? What is Paul? Ministering servants, not heads or parties. Oh, yeah, we've done this. Verse 6. Verse 6. I planted, Apollos watered, but God all the while was making grow, and he gave the increase. So just in case it was somebody that greeted you, and the other person didn't greet, did not mean that that person did not greet you. Because it takes two to greet. She doesn't know that I was greeting her. It takes two to greet. You are looking at me, I'm looking at you. How are you? She will respond. A smile comes. So neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but only God who makes it grow and become greater. Next verse. So it's only God. We are joined here with Christ. He who plants and he who waters are equal. One in aim of the same importance and esteem. I'm not different from you. It is only a responsibility that makes me stand there. I'm not different from you. It's the same blood of Jesus that paid the price for you and for me. It's the same Holy Ghost. I don't have a senior Holy Ghost to you. He who plants and new waters are equal, one in aim of the same importance and esteem. Yet each one shall receive his own reward, wages, according to his own labor. So let me quickly just say this in context of me and you now. Eh? Let me quickly say this. You will take the reward for listening and applying. I will take the reward for hearing and teaching. If I don't hear and teach appropriately, no reward for me. If you don't listen and apply, no reward for you. Let's go on. In 15, in 15, we are going to 15. Go on. Nine. For we are fellow workmen, joint promoters, laborers together with and for God. You are God's, yes? And field under cultivation. You are God's. Fantastic. Next verse. Ten. Ten. We are reading Bible. Accord, oh yeah, according to the grace, the special endowment for my tax of God, bestowed on me like a skillful architect and master builder. I laid the foundations and now another man is building upon it. But let each man be careful how he builds upon it. Next verse. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is already laid, which is Jesus Christ, the Messiah. The anointed one. Next verse. But if anyone builds upon the foundation, whether it be gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. Go on. The work of each one will become plainly, openly known. Shown for what it is. For the day of Christ will disclose and declare it. Because it will be revealed with fire. And the fire will test and critically appraise the character and the work of the work each person has done. Next verse. If the work which any person has built on this foundation, any product of his efforts, whatever, survives this test, he will get his reward. Next verse. But if any person's work is burned up under the test, he will suffer the loss of it all, losing his reward, though he himself will be saved, but only as one who has passed through fire. Okay. And we'll jump some. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, and Psalm 103, verse 4, tells us the character of God. When you heard that you were supposed to love people the way we've just read now, we need to know that God had shown the template. 
He is the one that wakes up us every morning and his mercies are new. Never the same, never the old one. It's a new one, fresh one. See, when he was talking with me, even me, I know that I'm a product of mercy. I'm a, I'm, I'm a complete product of mercy. If not for mercy, I will not be here. In fact, I will not be seated in your midst where I was coming from. I will not be seated in your midst. Because as I'm coming in, uh, uh, from there, the ushers will usher me and please sit there. by the capacity of what was running inside me. And while you are looking at me, it's the same capacity sometimes in you too. He has shown us mercy. Shown us love. Over and over and over and over and over and over. $10,000 worth per day. Per day. See, that 490, that 70 times 7, he does it daily. Because even me, I looked at it. Ah! I'm there to speak evil. I will leave it. Ah! 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 I looked at it. And I knew that I, I was close to the 490. Yes, we, maybe we barely just made it. Yeah. Ah! Father, you know, one more, one more. Oh, good day, one more. We all have. So when we wake up morning by morning and we wake up, it's a testimony that he still loves you. And it's the fact that he still cares about you. And he's expecting you to do the same towards your neighbor. He's expecting you to love your neighbor. He's expecting you to, see, the Samaritan was not even in the kingdom was not part of the kingdom, yet he was willing to take responsibility for the other person. Things happen around you, take responsibility. Help your neighbor. Who is my neighbor? My neighbor is the next person beside me. Regardless of where they come from, where, what station of life they are, that's my neighbor. That's my neighbor. Regardless, I don't have to know you to be able to help you. That's how we should live. I've picked people up because I had picked that person up. I don't pick everybody up. I've seen people move on quickly. I moved. But we hear at times, pick this person up. I'll pick the person up and he'll say, and by the time the person sits with me for some time, I know why he said I should pick up. Sometimes it's for me to minister to that person and tell the person about Christ. Sometimes to encourage that person going through some challenges as a Christian believer, wondering how money will come, that that person is able to get encouragement that don't worry, God loves you. He told me to pick you up. And he said, you should just take this right with me. And I carried the person to where, at least, I saved the person money, because even the person didn't have the money, and I dropped. I've even had situations where, as I'm telling the person to alight, he tells me, take money out and give to this person. Money that I didn't plan. But you take responsibility. That's how we live. When we live that way, we saw from scripture that a lot will happen for us. Now, somebody's wondering, let me wrap up. Let me see. Okay, 22 minutes. I'll try my best. Let me wrap up. Somebody's wondering, how can I do this, Pastor? With all the things I've read, in fact, I don't want to write it down inside my notebook so that it will not um, give a, a account, will not give evidence that you knew this scripture. For some of you now, you, are, you have not written anything down. You've not, you've not. You just said, okay, let's read it, let's read it, because you are wondering, should I write this thing down? But the fact that you are inside this church already means it's going to account, it's going to give an account. So, Plan to apply yourself. Don't worry. I will post it into the general group, the scriptures, so that you can have it and go and read it again. Because these are real life operations. You must be living this way for you to have an enjoyable, successful Christian life. 
for things to happen without you having to push that hard for it. Why? You are in the right place doing the right thing and God is blessing you for it. It's obedience, people. Obedience. This church will move farther than it's moving right now if we all apply the scripture. No need for wrangling. No need for caucus. No need for cliques. First John 4.4. 4. What does it say? First John 4.4. 4. First John 4.4. 4. You should know it by now. now. Little children, you are of God. You belong to him and have already defeated and overcome them, the agents of the Antichrist. Because he who lives in you is greater, mightier than he who is in the world. So the capacity you are going to use to do this scripture is already inside you. Greater is the capacity on your inside to live the Christian life, to live in love. Greater is that capacity. Why have I not been operating it? Because I have not realized who I am. When I realize that in Christ Jesus, I have this capacity, I begin to live it out. I pick up that First Corinthians 13, and I did that. So let me tell you, I also did that. I'm coming from Lodaba. I'm coming from the backside. I'm coming from where you will know was love. I was trained in the military school, well, paramilitary. And I was trained very bad. Most of us that came out of that school became cult guys. Why? The training was... Our training was fresh. You, you get trained. You enter cult. You, you, are, you are done. No thinking. We have, they've removed compassion out of our minds. They've removed so many things. Completely. Flogged, beaten every time. So there's nothing. You flogged me. Mm, he's not going to do anything. My mother got to know that it, it, I was already almost a goner. Well, one day, ah, you did this to my son. Hey, chaka, chaka. I was just standing. The man said, yeah. And Oko. <laughs> Why? I was not moving. I had been flogged so mercilessly that it didn't make any sense. What was she doing? She was tapping me. <laughs> I've had a cold boy take a metal bucket and slam it on my body. I know that God had many things inside to make sure that I didn't feel it, but I also did not feel it. By some of the training I had gone through, I didn't feel it. That's where I'm coming from. So I had to pick First Corinthians 13 and read it over and over and over again. To show my level of anger. So let me just say, see, I don't, I don't, I, I know that if I use my anger, I can kill. So I will go, I'm angry with somebody. I will go to the world and I start gig, 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 gig. That's how I used to calm myself down. Then. So you are not where I used to be. You are far from there. So you have a better opportunity to live that scripture. To live it and operate even better than I'm operating. Because that scripture is real. I picked it up and read it over and over and over and over. That was part of my first set of trainings as a Christian, young Christian. Because I knew where I was coming from. Where I was coming from, I had to run. Literally had to run from being a cult guy. Because they even tried to get me in. Because I went to a school that they could try to get me in. Galatians 2.20. Let's move on. It's not about me. Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. So can we read this together? Let's read it like it's written. Eh? Oh yeah, can we read? I have been touch your touch your touch. I have been crucified with Christ. In Him, I have shared this crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ, the Messiah, lives in me. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in, by adherence to, and reliance on. And complete trust in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. I've had to rely on him that it pays me not to seek vengeance. I've had to rely. Natural tendencies then was to seek vengeance in a bad way, if possible. That's 
That's why Christ started to quail. He catch me. At 12 years old, I was already born again. But even with that, Satan was still fighting me. So I went into a boarding school and the uh, military, uh, and the rest is history. So if there was no God content small before I went there, forget. But we've had cult guys who are doing exponentially well in the kingdom today living love lives that you will not even know they were once called guys before. You've had Paul, the apostle, who had killed. You see, there is nothing, you see, who was um, Shekar, Abi? Is it Shekar, Abi? Abi? Uh-huh. That was what Paul was doing. You are glossing it. That's what he was doing. Anybody that is not for us, we killed him. That was what he was doing. And yet you could be the one that could get saved, who give us this scripture we are reading, and could write two thirds of the New Testament. That means the word you are carrying and the capacity on your inside, you just don't know it. You don't know how far you can change your life completely. That's why this word is coming to you. That you can live a life whereby you love your neighbor as yourself. You love, you love, you love. The true fullness of what love is, you are doing it. Not by thought, not by speech, but by operation. Your life is being ordered. See, look at this here. Adherence to, so I know what he's saying. Reliance on, I need your help for it. And complete trust that if I do this, you are going to take care of me. So please, okay. let me just drop it there. Please understand this. There is a lot to be done. Next week is still most likely still the same scriptures. Maybe adding some few. You know, obviously, okay, I didn't read them. So, these same scriptures plus the ones that I didn't read, and maybe extras that will come. We are going to look at how to relate in the office so that you can do well. Love, love work is essential in the office. A lot of us do not relate appropriately. That's why you are not being promoted the way you should be promoted. You think the guy that has everybody as friend is just doing office politics. Just, no, that's not office politics. That's simple love of God. Being able to greet the gate man greet the uh, technician, greet the secretary, greet this person, making them feel that they are human beings. You see those guys, they will come, ah, and see if I want you, this, 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 they greet that one, ah, this, this. So when there is an issue that they have, those auntie, uncle, everybody is fighting for them. You, the Christian, that did his work, I, I crossed my teeth, dotted my eye. So everybody should do what they are supposed to do. Did they do it? You didn't fulfill the principle of love. So that's why they didn't do it. If you did your own, after crossing your teeth, dotting your eyes, obviously you will get better results. Because that guy, have you not noticed, he didn't cross his teeth, he didn't dot his eye. Did he even write is the question. And yet he still got the promotion. We wonder why some things are happening and it's persecution. Some of it is, and some of it is stupidity on our part. My own part. I have been stupid. The promotion I said uh, two, two years uh, uh, they, they kept. If I had worked in complete love, there is no way I would not have gotten that promotion. That's something. I greet everybody. But when you have crossed my path and you want to show me, I will avoid you in quotes like a plague. And just walk out. Please. Like my wife told me when I first, when we were newly married and all that. She said, bros, you know how to keep Mali so? I say, no. I say, yes, you do. I say, no. I say, you just, mm. I say, I, I was trained to, mm. you don't exist. The way I used to, you don't exist. I will walk past you. You don't exist. 
literally don't because i don't want to have any dealings with you again i don't want to have any fight with you again i don't want to have any waka mm, mm, mm. in fact for day so that we are on the same page you see this message is for me and for you today i realize that there is one person that have still operated that way too yes pastor so i preach to myself that i will change my ways even with that one person because we read even when they use you even when they do this we read it together we both read it I've had whereby a believer born again, spirit filled Christian, Libro Soto, Rakaka, uh -uh, my tongue is on fire. <clears throat> and yet, in church, one day we were praying and they raised the prayer point, uh, no, an altar call, and said, Those that have unforgiveness in their hearts, please come forward. And lo and behold, you know, feeling very down there. And, all of you come, come out. You come out. They are talking to you. So I just closed eye and just said, all these people will come out now. Then the Holy Ghost said, ah, ah, you too. I said, no, no. Inside my, no, ah, ah, no, I can't. Ah, no, no, no. Who have I not forgiven? Um, after my wife's uh, uh, explanation that I'm, I do my list, I've tried my best not to talk. I, I, I walk in love with everybody. So what, what who am I? Who am I? He reminded me somebody in secondary school that I did me so much wrong. I needed God to recorrect my brain with that guy because I had to come to terms with it based on how I was trained and what I had been taught. I cannot lie. If Jesus had not helped me, if I had had access to a gun, I'll be tongue talking, spirit filled, libroso to bagaboguba, yandele bosha. You are dead, go to hell. I would have done that neatly because I did not know how far reaching the marks he had placed on me was. There are things that you need to be healed of. Why you are this angry with other people is past experiences, people that don't have any bearing. So let me throw this in. You are always fighting with your wife, fighting with your, fighting with your husband. Or doing, see, it's not really the husband, it's not the wife. They are reminding you of the girl you knew before, or the guy, you knew, and you are thinking, ah, bitch, the, 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 that pattern that I want, I will, mm, I will show you. <laughs> so you are punishing somebody that has not accepted you, and said I do. You are punishing that person for the sins of another person that did not do, that, that just innocently did something that looked like the other person. So my wife can testify. I did something like that many, many years ago. I was just, you know, she said something. And she was like, ah, ah, what happened? What, what? I said, no, 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 no. She just looked at me because she knew the person that I was involved with and what the person did. And she knew that, ah, it seems... The way I answered, it's most likely that lady I'm still talking to. So she told me. That is, I said, I could, I'm the kind of person, if you tell me the truth, I will hear it. I will not hide from it. So I heard, and I knew it's true. And I had to apologize. You are not the former person. You are you. Whatever you said is not the former person. It is you. That's why that scripture says you will not have any record of wrongdoing. Because a lot of times, it's the father that did something to you that you are now using to beat the son that did not do anything to you. It's true. Forgive the father. For he knoweth not what he did. Because I'm a father. Sometimes we don't know what we are doing. We just don't know. As best as we know is what we are doing. Because there is no template. Nobody gave us my, Okay, so this now, now. Even with all the books we have read. Eh? Book does not give you the exact figure of what is going on at that point in time. 
Because when you are using the template for Finyi, for Tofumi, you are on your own. They are two different people. You now use it for Muri, you, are, you, are, you have missed the point. Com- I mean complete. Worlds apart. My first born is different from my second born, different from the third. Com- as in worlds apart. I try to use the template for Muri on Finyi. You are on your own, your own, or your so you have to get download from heaven for each one, every point in time. So fathers, let's help ourselves. Stay connected to God. You'll be fine. You'll be better. That's one thing we need to do more. Men in the house, get acquainted with God more. It will help you a great deal. Because you are the ones molding their minds. You are the ones molding their destinies. It's in your hand. See, the benefit and... No, see, let me say it this way. I round up with this. I had a lot to say, but I'm just picking, picking. See, the outcome of your home, of your family, lies on the head of the man in that family. It is not the woman. You read your scripture inappropriately. You read it out of context. Uh, you know, the woman, what's that scripture again? Uh, eh? wise the wise woman builds her home. And you know, the man just say, hey, you women, you build the home. I'm just to provide the money. You are, you are missing the point. Because you should have read the first one, which is in Genesis, that you have to look after the woman. You should have read your first Corinthians that said, love the woman. Because the outcome of the woman it's in your own hand. So if you take care of the woman, the woman can take care of the home and you can have a great home. Not the other way around. Because it's the woman. If you take care of her... If, so when the scripture said that a woman that, uh, that is always nagging, it's like a consistent draining of water on the... You understand? That scripture, it meant that you should know that told you, yeah, it's, Take care of your wife. Said it in Yoruba. I told you, you are where? Take care of your wife. Look after the woman in your life. And while you are not yet married, look after the women in your life, your mother, your sisters. It matters. See, ladies are now wiser. When they see the way you treat your sister and treat your mother, they have a picture of how you will treat them when you get, they get into your house. So this love matter is a serious matter. It's touching everywhere and everything. So let's get it right. Let's get it straight. Last week's message plus this message is a must listen to again. It's a must apply. Okay, I, my Bible, my paper, I'm writing. What are the things I'm changing? What are the things I need to do? Lord, help me here. Lord, help me. See, this morning I say, cried, God, help me. Help me. Because I know in the natural man's capacity, you can't do it. So that's why we don't lean to the flesh. We lean to the spirit to help us. We don't lean to what we can do. Please come. We don't lean to what we can do. We don't. What I can do by myself is try to keep myself from falling. That's what I can do. So that's why I will stand. When I say I'm, I, I try to pull myself. Mm. But when some circumstances and situations come, that's why you need to have people around you. If nobody was around, they will, I would have fallen. Am I right? Because I did not have the capacity to stop myself in mid-air. He was not ready for me to fall. Nobody's ready for you to fall. So they will help you as best as they can. So that's why I didn't tell him what I wanted to do so that he would not be prepared for what I wanted to do. Because nobody tells you that uh-huh, um, by June I may need some help. 
in September, some things are going to happen for me, and I may step on your toes. So in September, around September the 15th, just forgive me ahead that I will step on your toes September. Nobody does that. If they do that, you know where we should send them to now. Yaba left. Why will you tell me ahead of time this is what you want to do to me? I, there's something wrong. So nobody does. So they don't give you that information. They don't tell you. You have to be ready. That's why I did what I did. I walked up to him and I knew he would get ready. You have to be ready. That's why your love work must be on 24-7. You have to be ready. They're not going to tell you. And they didn't intentionally want you to get into trouble. I didn't intentionally want him to make me fall. I just fell. And the guy was, God. And he carried. That's how we should be for one another. That's how we should be for one another. Nobody's going to intentionally tell you. Hmm. June 15. <laughs> and I'm still coming back June 18. Then by June 25, I'm really going to hurt you. Then in December 31st, before you cross over, all the things I didn't do, I will not do. Nobody does that. So some things will happen. Work with it. Work with it. And just in case, you know, I told you last week, this, I'm going to preach something like this. I, you see, he had told me that there is need for recorrection in the church for some things to really move for everybody here. There are things hanging over your head. It's until you are fully aligned that it drops. So that's why we're doing this. So that we can all get into the position where boom, it's dropping, it's dropping. Then, ah, praise God. Oh, wow, wow, wow. That's what we're doing. So let's understand. They are not going to be prepared. You are not going to be prepared. So what can you do? Like what he's doing right now. Be fully prepared. That in case ah, he's going to drop again, you are there. Because your neighbor will drop. You too, you are dropping. Sometimes you even drop too. You know that. You know. Then you now want them to be prepared for you. Well, you are not prepared for them. Uh, they should know this only happened once. But you sh- should know also that it only happened once. And just so as to show you, see, sometimes you need more than yourself <laughs> to prepare. Because if you fall, ah, we all fall. <laughs> so that's why we have a community. He wants to fall. I will call Pastor Taiwo. I will call him. I will call. Oh, oh yeah, guys, let us help this man. Oh. That's why we have community. That's why we have community. Some of the things that will happen, we can't handle it alone. It's too big for us. So don't carry it on your head. Call others to help out. You are going through something, call others to help out. That's why we are brother and sister. Same blood. That's why I showed that scripture. Same blood. Don't just call pastor. Because pastor may not be around you at that time. A pastor is here. Then you are falling there. How will I help you? But community is all around you. Mr. IP, come. Pastor Ty will come. Mr. Peter, come. Community is around you. He wants to fall. <laughs> eh? Whichever side. If he wants to fall this side, I'm here. We will support. If he falls on that side, not a problem. But we will all join hands. There is community. She will even join. Ah, ah. So please understand this. You can have your seats. 
we are in this together. Everybody understand we are in this together. We are brother, sister, joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Next week, we'll be looking at a scripture. I didn't put it into that one. It just dropped in me. Each joint supplies. It's still love that is driving it. That I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm supplying my own parts to make this thing work. I'm supplying. I'm supplying. Each joint supplies. Rise up to your feet. Said I won't do... Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will help us to not just be the hearers of this word, but the doers in the name of Jesus. I ask, Lord Most High, like you led me in prayer this morning, and you told me something very crucial. You said most times we ask for mercy for all our wrongdoings. Granted, very valid. But we also ask for grace as well. Because we did not fully understand that scripture. We come boldly to the throne of grace and of mercy. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. That need we thought was financial. No, that need was the thing that made you trip. Now receive an empowerment from God to help you in that particular situation to come out and be better. So that's how we'll pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us. Lord, we ask for mercy. For any way we've not walked as we should walk. From the scriptures we've seen, we know that there are areas and places we've not done what we should do. We ask for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. We receive a cleansing by your blood in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask for grace. Grace to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Grace to do your word as it should be done. Enablement from heaven. To help us in the journey of life. Where love is concerned. We receive right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, the goal is that when we do the things that pleases you. We walk in the alignment required. Lord, we ask, help us to be rightly aligned with heaven's operations in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we give you the praise and all the glory. Lord, we thank you that you hear our prayers and you answer. We give you praise, glory, and honor. And Lord, as a church, I commit each and every one of us, myself inclusive, to a deeper, greater walk of love. Where love continues to issue out of all of us. Not just only to the church, our brethren, but even more outside in the name of Jesus. That the body of Christ encouraged, fantastic, but that the body outside that is yet to join Christ, that they will be affected and impacted by that love in the mighty name of Jesus. And it will draw them close. Lord, let that be our portion as a church in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Have your seats very briefly. I'll try and maximize the time. Don't worry. I'll take over from here. Okay. Um, Please just project the two events that are happening. Um, Okay. So while we're at it, this is Kingsword International Church, Igodo. We love you. You could have gone anywhere else, but you showed up here. We want to appreciate you, especially if you're a person that is here for the very first time under the sound of my voice. Can you just wave unto the Lord in appreciation of his goodness? God bless you, sir. Please give him a Kingsword welcome. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. 
Thank you so much for coming. Please take your Bible and your belongings and just walk with the people that are um, taking you to the back. We just have a little refreshment and reception at the back. Please, can we give a round of applause to them? God bless you. You are special. You came on a day like this. Hallelujah. Yes, and in fact, surprisingly, oh, Father's Day, fantastic. God bless you. You know, the men came to church today on the men's day. Oh, my God. Okay. Yes, so, um, we usually have prayer meetings online in this church. We have Mondays to Saturday. Monday in the morning, uh, Monday to Saturday, mornings by 6 a.m., to 7 a.m. Monday to Friday and on Saturday by 7 to 8, 8.30 latest. We have that. And in the evening by 9 p.m. Mondays to Friday, 9 p.m. We also have um, prayers with Dr. K. That's restart with Dr. K. And that happens by 1 a.m. 1 p.m. in the afternoon. That's also online. So you can join any one of those prayer sessions and get blessed. I dare say that the people that have been joining have been getting extremely blessed. So join in if you have not been doing so before. Um, like I said, if you need to do 15 minutes to start it off, start with the 15 minutes. You need to unhook, go and do what you need to do, do. But at least that 15 minutes, you spent it with God. So let's get involved. Please, um, I sent something from Dr. K. I believe. Let me go there. Okay. So, um, this week's restart, it has a theme. A theme. It's, it's, set, it's set time for my favor. It's the set time for my favor. It's the set time for my favor. Last week, it was on mercy. This one is on favor. So, be involved. Be there. June the 21st to the 25th the, for the services will be posted in our general group um, chat room. So if you are not on the general group chat room, please as you walk out, meet one of the ushers and write your name, your WhatsApp number so that we can bring you in into that. Okay. Men in the house, can you shout hallelujah? Please do a better shout hallelujah. Okay. The men's conference will be happening this year, July the 23rd and July the 24th. It is titled, Rooted. Amen. And we have some powerful ministers that will be there. Dr. K will obviously be there as usual. We'll have um, Feladro Toye in the house. We'll have Jimmy Tewe in the house. We'll also have Pastor Damilola Oluwa Toyinbo in the house. It's going to be an awesome time of renewal for the men so please men mark your calendar and let's get involved as much as possible praise god okay okay we'll be giving our offerings very soon so please package your offerings and um you can i i believe the information for if you want to transfer will be put on the screen very soon so just follow the instruction and you can sow your seed unto God. We'll be doing it together very soon. Okay. Another thing. Yeah. I believe that's it. So the information for the offering, you can put it there. So that's where you can sow your seed. If you are ready, please come and rise up to our feet. Apologies, 722. Just in case there's somebody like me that has not done it. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you the praise and all the glory for all that you have done. Lord, we thank you that you are a good God. We thank you that you have our best interest at heart. Lord, we look to you for help in this season. Help to live the life we ought to live as we should 
in the mighty name of jesus lord god almighty we give you the praise and all the glory lord we bring these offerings unto you as a token of our appreciation and our sacrifice unto you you have been a good god you have kept us alive you have kept us protected you have delivered us you have healed us you have been our provider and we want to say thank you lord god almighty as we give we declare it's given back to us good measure pressed down shaken together and run over men give unto our bosoms we have abundance in the name of jesus and not lack father we give you the praise and all the glory we say thank you in jesus mighty name and the people of god said amen, amen. hallelujah no don't worry just stay as you are we'll pray the blessing and then go okay just pass the offering baskets around. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, you can open your eyes to drop your eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this week. We declare, Lord, by your grace, by your wisdom, by your favor, by your help, this week is blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, we say, go before us. And make the crooked path straight in the name of Jesus. Level the mountains and fill up the valleys in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, have your way. Do what only you can do. Let this season be a season of increase, of progress, of prosperity. For each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we are aligning and moving in the spirit, we ask, Lord, for assistance in our physical works whether in our businesses, in our careers, in our marriages, in our homes, wherever. Lord, we say, have your way, do what only you can do in our lives. This week, in the name of Jesus, let there be an avalanche of testimonies, of unusual miracles happening for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And the people of God said... Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Do have a wonderful, wonderful week. The preceding message was brought to you by Kingsword International Church, Igodo. We are located at Ademoj Event Center beside Impress Hotel, Yanodo, Bostop, Last Week, Sherry Road, Sherry. Our phone number is 081-622-11615. You may email us at kicsherry at gmail.com or visit our website www.kingswordigodo.com.